You're looking at the American-made rocket and spacecraft that will return American astronauts to the International Space Station from American soil for the first time since the retirement of the space shuttle last flown nearly nine years ago. Today, we're giving it another shot with our partners at SpaceX. Wednesday's first attempt was postponed due to that wild weather. But if all goes well today, we will mark a new first in NASA's storied history and usher in the commercial crew era of American spaceflight. There is astronaut Doug Hurley getting into his spacesuit, and he's being helped by one of the suit technicians there. He has flown into space two times before. He was the pilot on STS-127 and 135. And there's a wider shot. You can see astronaut Bob Benkin also in view now. Bob is to the right of your screen, and he, was, he also flew on two shuttle missions. Bob is a native of St. Anne, Missouri. And Doug is from Apple Lake in New York. He was born in Endicott, considers Apple Lake in his hometown. We can see now NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein. He's talking to the crew, and it looks like Associate Administrator Jim Moorhard um, is also in the room standing to the right of your screen. And these are great moments to get uh, a last chance to talk to the senior leadership of NASA as they're about to go off and launch into the cosmos. And I, I think when you look at the co how Bob and Doug complement each other and how these SpaceX suits, you know, they really complement the, the astronauts too because they're, they're more form-fitted, they're custom-made, and uh, this is a moment where they're getting ready to, you know, do the, do the real deal. And uh, Lauren, I think, you know, the integration of the suit and the, and the vehicle and the seats is just really, really impressive how y'all at SpaceX did that. Yeah, the primary purpose of the spacesuit, it is a, it's a pressure suit. Now, the Dragon capsule is already pressurized, so even in the vacuum of space, the crew is safe when inside of Dragon, but in the unlikely event of an anomaly that causes the capsule to depressurize, we can actually flow oxygen or nitrox into the suit and that will keep the astronauts pressurized in flight. So that's its main purpose. So it's that, that form and function and uh, some style there as well. And for the kids out there that have 3D printers or have 3D printed, the, uh, the actual helmets were made by 3D printing. So you could be a spacesuit designer yourself because you already have the skill set and uh, or fly in space one day if you wanted to. And we are looking at a live picture now of Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley walking down that hallway in the astronaut crew quarters. We just saw Doug wave at the screen and they're just turning the corner, getting inside that elevator. And this, you can't see it from here, but there is a banner hanging there. You can kind of see it in the back. There's a banner hanging on the wall of the elevator with the signatures of all the people who worked on this mission. So it was really important for, for them to hang that up in there so Bob and Doug could see it. and there the doors are opening. Here they come. Great. And there they are, NASA astronauts. <laughs> Small crowd, but big cheers. NASA astronauts, Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley, Doug on the left, Bob on the right, waving to the crowd there to cheer them on. <laughs> and there are their families right in front of them. The virtual hugs, a very special <laughs> moment. Fist bumps. You can hear them. Let's <laughs> <laughs> light this candle, I agree. Launch America! <laughs> They are getting into the Tesla Model X that's going to take them to the launch pad, being strapped into their seats. Their suit techs are attaching their umbilicals, so uh, integrated into the Teslas. These are not just the new Tesla you can just buy off the, off the web or in a Tesla dealership. Um, they've been outfitted with cooling units, and that white umbilical, similar to what you saw in the checkout, the suit room, 
uh, that umbilical is being connected to the suit to provide cooling air to the astronauts while they're on the way to the pad. And those Falcon wing doors are closing. Super sleek. A rapid departure from the Astro van. <laughs> yes, I would say so. <laughs> and their uh, flight surgeon is in the front seat in the passenger side, taking the journey along with them. As I mentioned last time, we always think about the technology and the rockets, but this is what it's all about, the families coming together, supporting the families, us working together as a team to ensure they get up there safely and back home safely for their families. I couldn't hear everything they were saying, but I, I did catch Bob telling his son to, to be good for mom, make her <laughs> life easy. <laughs> As a parent, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see that prominent NASA meatball. There's our hangar. We process Falcon Heavy in there. There are other boosters in that hangar as well. And the Rocket and Dragon that is on the pad right now was put together, or rather final, uh, finally integrated inside of that hangar and then rolled out to that pad to go up vertical. And there it is. That, uh, that shot really gives you a sense of the scale of the Falcon 9 rocket. Those Teslas look teeny, teeny, tiny <laughs> uh, making their way up there. Yeah, really cool watching the Teslas pull up driving on the launch pad just a few feet away from the vehicle. This is awesome and getting really excited over here. Uh, looks like they've already gotten out of the car and they are walking up uh, to the elevator that will carry them all the way up to the 255 foot level and then they'll have a couple of steps to get up to uh, the level where the crew access arm is. Core on Countdown 1 at 2 hours 57 minutes. The crew has arrived at the pad on schedule. There they are, taking, taking in the site, um, craning to see the top of the Falcon 9 rocket. It's uh, 230 feet tall if you round up. And then Crew Dragon is another 27 feet from the bottom of the trunk to the top of the nose cone. So uh, if you're, when you're out there in person, it's, it's, it's really hard to describe just how, how large it is. Look at them getting excited. They're, uh, they're ready to get in the vehicle, get in the <laughs> elevator, and uh, make it to the top. And we should hear a call any moment that the crew has arrived at the pad as they make their way up the stairs and they're headed to the crew access arm now. So as you can see, they have already arrived uh, at pad 39A, where Falcon 9 will lift off from at 3.22 p.m. Eastern time today. They have ascended the tall structure already, which is next to the rocket, and it's called the fixed service structure, and also have already walked down the corridor, which is known as the crew arm, which is what they're standing in right now. That's right, and as they prepare to board Dragon, they have this one final stop that they're standing in right now, and that's the white room. 
The white room is literally just the room at the end of the crew arm that has an opening into Dragon. It is the last place on planet Earth Bob and Doug are going to be standing before they step into Dragon for their ride to the International Space Station. Core on Countdown 1 at T minus 2 hours and 46 minutes. The crew has arrived at the White Room and its ingress is in progress on schedule. And as they climb into Dragon, they will buckle themselves in and attach their umbilicals to their suits. And as you can see, the suit techs are there to help them get buckled and settled into those seats. And we can see the seats slowly start to rotate. Again, they're in this down position just to make it easier to climb in and out of Dragon. They'll rotate to this launch position to put their backs a little bit more parallel to the ground. It makes taking the G-Force a little bit easier for the crew on the way uphill, but most importantly, positions those touchscreens directly in front of them, which is just their gateway into Dragon. Dragon, SpaceX, seats here in the launch position. We copy. And launch control clear to retract the access arm on time. SpaceX Dragon displays are configured for launch. Copy. Bob, Doug, on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, it's been a huge honor to help you get ready for today's historic mission. Know that we're with you, have an amazing flight, and enjoy those views of our beautiful planet. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it is absolutely our honor to be part of this uh, huge effort to get uh, the United States back in the launch business. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you for more of it. Thank you. Copy all. Thanks for those words. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. FTS is armed for launch. Under a minute now, the FTS, the flight termination system, has been armed. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA. Go SpaceX. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. America has launched. And so rises a new era of American space flight. And with it, the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. We're throttling back up to full power as we're through Max Q. Copy, one Bravo. We heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second abort zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until the first stage has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. Next major event coming up is gonna be the triple 
We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. M M1D throttle down. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Two Alpha. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Copy, two Alpha. MVAC ignition. All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So they're gonna continue under the power of this second stage. Stage two propulsion is nominal. Which will cut off at Seco or second engine cut off at about eight minutes and 44 seconds into today's flight. So a little over five minutes to go still on this second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from about North Carolina up the eastern seaboard almost to Canada. Things looking good though, getting good call outs, nominal propul pul propulsion on that second stage. Bob and Doug continuing to make their way into orbit. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal in Bermuda. SpaceX Dragon, nominal trajectory. All right, here in nominal trajectory, so Dragon pointed in the right direction, continuing to make their flight uphill. Heard acquisition of signal Bermuda, that's one of the other ground stations that they're using to get telemetry and data back from this spacecraft. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. And while they continue uphill, it looks like we are getting a view of the first stage as well. Yep, on your right screen, you can see that first stage with the grid fins deployed. It's making its way back to attempt to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you today. Stage one entry burn startup. And there is that entry burn like, beginning. This burn lasts about 36 seconds long. Stage two, FTS is saved. Now we are waiting for our first stage to make its way to our drone ship. Of course, I still love Dragon, you. Dragon SpaceX, nominal orbital insertion. Launch escape system is nominal orbital insertion. Nominal orbital insertion. Nominal orbital insertion. Deploy. And what you're seeing on your screen is a live view of our drone ship where our first stage will be coming down. Looks like we lost that live view, but we'll wait for confirmation of that landing shortly here. Falcon 9 first stage is successfully landed. And there you can see on your screen, Falcon 9 has landed. This is the first Falcon 9 to carry humans to orbit. So very exciting for us. And as you can see on your right screen, Bob and Doug are still making their way to their targeted orbit. <laughs> M1D to recovery one. So exciting today. <laughs> M1D. It doesn't stop. It does not stop. All right, we did, we did hear again that call out, good orbital insertion, so that means Falcon 9 and Dragon right now exactly where they're supposed to be. M1D to FRC on recovery one. And it's right at about 12 minutes when Can Dragon will separate. Looks like we saw a zero G indicator floating around there. I know Bob and Doug owe us a little bit about what exactly that is that they brought up with them. <laughs> Dragon separation confirmed. Countdown one is unmerged. Separation confirmed. And there's that call out. Dragon is now officially making its way to the International Space Station today. Dragon SpaceX with that separation call. Uh, we have a few words for you from our Falcon 19. 
standing by. Dragon, Chief Engineer on Dragon to Ground. Bob Doug, on behalf of the entire launch team, thanks for flying with Falcon 9 today. We hope you enjoyed the ride and wish you a great mission. Thanks, Bala. Congratulations to you and the F-9 team for the first uh, human ride for Falcon 9, and it was incredible. Uh, appreciate all the hard work, and uh, thanks for the great uh, ride to space. Copy all. Good luck. Like Proud of you guys and the rest of the team. Uh, thank you so much for what you've uh, done for us today, putting America back into low Earth orbit from the Florida coast. Good luck. Godspeed. Well, everyone, welcome aboard Dragon. Uh, my name is Doug. Next to me is uh, Bob. You probably know him. We're so glad to be with you uh, this evening and uh, welcome you on board uh, Dragon. Got a couple uh, things we want to talk about first before we kind of show you around. The first is uh, kind of a tradition we've had uh, over the years with spacecraft going way back to the uh, Mercury era, uh, and then a tradition that's been carried on ever since with uh, all our space vehicles, including the Soyuz. Uh, we uh, were, were given the honor to name uh, this capsule. I know most of you uh, at SpaceX especially know it as Capsule 206, but uh, I think uh, all of us thought that we could maybe do a little bit better than that. So uh, without further ado, we would like to uh, welcome you aboard Capsule Endeavor. Uh, we chose Endeavor for a few reasons. One, because of this incredible Endeavor, uh, NASA, SpaceX, and the United States has been on uh, since the end of the shuttle program back in 2011. The other reason we named it uh, Endeavor is a little more personal to Bob and I. Uh, we both had our first flights on shuttle Endeavor and uh, it just meant so much to us to carry on that name. Uh, that's what we decided to go with. So we hope you enjoy that name, and once again, welcome on board. Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome aboard Endeavour, the uh, SpaceX vehicle headed to the International Space Station. Uh, today, we accomplished the first flight off the Florida coast in uh, quite some time, and Doug and I were really proud to have an opportunity to be a part of that. Uh, we're doing it in a brand new uh, spaceship, a spaceship that's a lot different than its namesake uh, Endeavour, the space shuttle, in that it has uh, touch display screens that allow us to accomplish most of the interfacing requirements that we have. We'll have uh, if Doug pans over and points at the display in front of me, you can see the, the forward view that we had uh, uh, during the maneuvers that we most recently did. You can look out the window. It looks like the centerline camera doesn't have a lot of content on it now. We're kind of pointed into space so that the windows can see the Earth below us. But we've got the capability to interface with the vehicle, and it's kind of interesting. There's a command. This little button over here is actually what the commands are for our displays. One thing that does get lost is there is a uh, extensive uh, button panel down below as well. So over on uh, this side, we can turn the displays on and off, as well as send some commands for some contingency situations. Uh, on the other side, we have the ability to uh, deploy shoots and things like that on entry. So uh, we do have some buttons, but the primary interface is uh, these displays. So nice, new, modern cockpit that we've got for our, our uh, compared to our namesake, the Space Shuttle uh, Endeavor. I'm going to migrate a little bit away from our seats here, and Doug, from his seat, is going to continue to try to follow me so you can tell what can be seen from the, the seat that he sits in. So from his seat, when he is inside the, in the vehicle, strapped in, this is what his view actually looks like. You can see a, a window off to the one side. We each have a window that we can view out and, and see what's going on outside. That was exciting on Ascent for us to be able to see the, the arm rotate away from the pad, and that's when we both, I think, knew that we were uh, going to launch today. So that was, that was super cool. I've got one on my side uh, as well. Uh, the hatch that we came in is the hatch that's uh, right behind me. It is a little bit of a tight quarters, uh, but I'm going to uh, try to uh, demonstrate some of the capability that we have 
now that we're in zero gravity. So I think I was requested to do a backflip. I'm going to kind of do a side spin, which is a little bit of a permutation on that request. So hopefully you can see what it's like to actually float in zero gravity. And uh, Doug and I are super excited that we got the opportunity to do this again today, uh, even before the end of May. So that was super cool. We did. It, in, it turns out end up with one stowaway on board our uh, vehicle when we launched today. It was not uh, uh, just Doug and I who uh, accomplished the launch here. We do have a, an Apatosaurus aboard. We both have two boys uh, who are super interested in dining. And uh, we collected up all the dinosaurs between the two houses, and Trimmer, the Apatosaurus, uh, got the vote from the boys to make the trip into space today with us. And so that uh, was a super cool thing for us to get a chance to do for both of our sons, who I, I hope are super excited to see uh, their toy floating around with us on board. I'm sure they would rather be here uh, given the opportunity, but hopefully they're proud of this as well. Okay, uh, as we work our way towards one of the windows, uh, unfortunately it's getting a little bit dark, but uh, I don't know if Bob can pan over here. We're now, we just passed off of the coast of Newfoundland and we're headed over to, uh, or over the Atlantic right now. I don't know if you can uh, get a good picture of that. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoy that view um, as we pass over the Atlantic. And uh, I think with that, we will work ourselves back into the seats and uh, wrap things up for this evening. So Doug's there uh, making a nice big smile for the camera. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the trip today with us on board the uh, Dragon Capsule Endeavor with our friend Trimmer, the Apatosaurus, uh, and Doug and I. We just would like to uh, thank SpaceX, we'd like to thank NASA, and we'd like to thank the, uh, the American people for the opportunity today. And we're really proud of the entire team that was able to accomplish human space flight again from the Florida coast. Uh, just a wonderful experience. Uh, Doug and I are just so proud to be a part of it. And just just uh, want to thank uh, everybody who gave us uh, this opportunity and worked so hard uh, to make this happen today. So with that, uh, I think it'll be good night from Capsule Endeavor. Good night to everyone at NASA, at SpaceX, and the United States, and congratulations to the teams that got us into orbit. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, Chris Cassidy and uh, his Russian colleagues on board the International Space Station uh, tomorrow morning. Good night, Megan and Theo. And Karen and Jack.